Welcome back to the Sundown Podcast. My name is Big Pepper Jack, and I'll be your host for tonight's episode. Today, we're introducing video to the show, so you can watch Young Igloo's big, greasy forehead. Anyway, tonight's guest is Young Igloo's co-worker, Keenan. He's also a big fucking nerd. Let me do it one more time. Anyway, uh, this is Sundown Podcast, episode seven. I'm here with Keenan, my boss. Anyway, um, we, we fix jets. We try to fix jets. <laughs> We just had like a we we, we had like an, a whole opening and I fucked it up, so we're just we're just we're just we're just gonna steamroll the whole thing. Yeah, the bit's already done. You wouldn't get it. Yeah, I fucked it up. <laughs> Sorry. We uh, we fix jets. He, yeah. He fix he fixes the outside. I I replace the inside of the jet. That's the best way we can describe it. We fix jets so they can bomb brown people in other countries. You know, people. You know, people get a little upset when I bring up that point and when I <laughs> yeah. when I tell people that. However, like, if you look at our, uh, if you, have you well, have you heard of have you heard of the Ninja Bomb? The Ninja Bomb. Yeah. So uh, they were obvi- obviously it's been a thing a while for you know collateral damage that has a lot of uh, negative negative backlash and stuff around it. So what they did is they made the Ninja Bomb. I can't remember the actual designation for it. Um, but they basically took a, I think it was like a 200, like a 200 or 2000 pound bomb. They emptied out the explosives from it and they basically, uh, put spring loaded fins on it that are sharpened. Fins? Fins. So the guiding fins on the bomb are blades. Okay. And so they can, they can laser target. They'll release the bomb, it'll track to where the laser's going, and then at the last moment it springs out with these blades and just kills the one person that they targeted. <laughs> that just seems like a lot of work, just, just just get one guy. But you only get the one guy. Or, you know, like the car that he's riding, and you don't kill all the people that he's hiding in amongst. Interesting. That's how dope. does that like how does that work? Does does just like just like I told you, they just laze the, they, they get eyes on the guy, they'll laze him with the drone, they'll launch the bomb, and it'll just glide in, and at the last moment, just springs out, hits him, and just kills him with a 2,000 pound sword. But everyone else around him is fine. Yeah, there, there's no explosive. So it's, it. so it's just like blades comes out, and how does the blades know not to hit anyone else? Is it just like, it's, well, it's, it's, it's like, guided? It's like about like a 10 foot span of blades. Like they stay attached to the bomb. There's there's no launching of the blades. You're they just launch a two thousand pound lawn dart at the guy essentially. Now how do you know this? Did you get this from the internet or do you know this It was from it was from a news source. Okay. That okay. they they were talking about the you're success me a lot, of the ninja bomb. You're, you're telling me a lot of things oh, that no, might it, be it's, top it's, secret. It's, po- it's public knowledge. Yeah okay. it's it's out there. Okay. I did hear about one crazy thing that the government was working on uh, it was from a friend. I'm pretty sure he, he was he was talking shit, but like, it was a missile that could change its radar cross section at will. And I don't know how true that is or why you would really need that. I, uh, uh, it'd probably be for. Uh, are you familiar with the wild weasel? No. Okay, so the wild weasel was a uh, count or an electronic countermeasure. I don't want to say like procedure or like. It was basically a concept back in the late, in like the 70s and 80s, where they would take an F4 Phantom. He'd be the one person in the group who'd be like just out there with his radar signature. He would be the wild weasel. So he would essentially draw in all of the SAM sites on the ground to target him. But then he had an electronic countermeasures package on his aircraft that would fry the radar sites. Interesting. So he would draw all the attention to him in a in an airspace. Everyone would be like, oh, that's a juicy target. We're going to get him. He would just have to dodge all the SAMs and stuff that would inevitably launch after him. But then he would just... And, their, and the radars would be disabled and would allow the rest of his people to uh, target the, the SAM sites. Okay. Fucking rad. Yeah, their, their actual patch is... Uh, it had not an acronym where it's the letters that represent the, yeah. the words in it or whatever, um, it, but it stood for you gotta be shitting me. 
<laughs> because the first time the concept was brought up and the pilot was told what he was going to be doing, that's what he said. He was like, you got to be shitting me. But no, it, it worked. Wow. Fucking weapons of mass destruction are sick and awesome, dude. Am I right, dude? Come on, man. Up here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> they 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 can't be. Fight to that that's on you now. <laughs> no, I I agree. I agree too. I knew what I was signing up for with that. Yeah, you knew exactly what type of, of video this was going to be. I I understand this can go in any directions. It's 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 chaotic as you are. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is a podcast, so it's a little more stable than some of the other nonsense I've done. Yeah, it's as stable as the rickety outhouse behind your grandpa's house. It might stay up another day or two. You never know. That's true. Okay, well, obviously I brought you in here because, I mean, I think, I don't know how it happened. Did did I start it or did someone else in the office start it? Like, you should have Cormac on the, on the show. You said it as a joke and I agreed to it. You were like, you should be on my podcast. And I was like, okay, and why'd when? you agree to it? Are you fucking crazy? <laughs> you don't know. I'm crazy I'm for other you. reasons. You don't know what I'm going to do to you. <laughs> you won't do anything to me. You can try to do stuff to me. Look, you don't know, it's not man. Happening. I, I might have um, I might have something underneath your chair that I could just press a button and and cheese just squirts out of it. I'd be very upset. You'd be you'd be getting <laughs> cheese all over my clothes. Um I don't have that no, device. No, it's just yet. uh <laughs> I can help you with that device. Thanks. Um <laughs> I don't know, it's just uh try anything twice, right? Okay. You know, like you're you're, you're a funny guy. You bring up some good points. You bring up some interesting... You, you bring energy to the office. So I appreciate it's, that. I, I, had, uh, I have no issue being here and shooting the shit with you. Yeah. I mean, that's like the best part about my day working at that place is just to not do any work at all <laughs> and mess with people well, in you're their right. minds. <laughs> well, you don't do any, any work anyway. Yeah, you're right. I, well... <laughs> you paint. You paint. Yeah. I paint and it takes a long time to do the paint. You know who's my favorite person to mess with, though, at work? Uh, it's... <laughs> he is my favorite person to mess with so far. He gives me the best reactions I can ever hope for. And it's always juicy whenever I say something stupid and he's just... <laughs> and he does that face. Just He just does the gym, just... Yeah. I think I told you this joke I did. We were having, like, a discussion about, like, instruments and shit like that. And oh, I was yeah. like, hey... We should we should start a band, and I'll be like, you can play the triangle, and I'll play the bassoon. <laughs> and he's like, do you even know what a bassoon is? And I was like, yeah, it's a woodwind instrument. Stupid. And he was like, do you even know what a woodwind instrument is made out of? <laughs> do you want to know what I said? Brass. It's it's made of wind. You're right. <laughs> He was visibly upset, and I was like, "All right, I gotta, I gotta get out of here now." Yeah, <laughs> Probably my that, that's my best joke I've done with him so far. Yeah, I, I could see him throwing hands over that. Yeah, no, uh, but I, I love him. He's a good guy. He takes my jokes in on the chin, it, in stride. That's all you can do. Exactly. Anyway, uh, you brought in some stuff. Actually, I kind of wanted to give you something. Uh, here's here's your gift. I'm, I'm gonna try to start giving my my guests gifts now. You you want me to open it right here now? Are you, or? Wait, quick question: are you, are you an XL or an L? Either, it work. Either works. Okay, you get the XL. I'm 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 a I'm a tall individual. Go ahead and open it right now and show us the camera. Now I'm scared. <laughs> now I'm scared. But that's crazy that you actually you have actual merch. Like, yeah. That's actually pretty fucking dope. Now put it on. I'm not, no. I'm Strip. Not, 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 not Show us the goods, dude. No, I'm kidding. You don't uh, gotta I'll do that. <laughs> you don't gotta do You can put it in the ground if you need to. I don't give a fuck. That's what it's meant to be. It's it's meant to be worn. It's meant to be tossed around. It's meant, meant to get dirty. And yeah, there's also some stickers in it, too. Nice. It was, yeah, I, I got those shirts made like a while back ago. And I sold a bunch of them at work. And also around other places too, where I was congregating. Usually, wherever I meet other artists, I'm like, "Hey, do you want to buy a T-shirt?" And they're like, <laughs> "No." I'm like, "All right, fuck it." <laughs> so, do you want to buy my merch? <laughs> no. It's like, hold on, it's really good, and they're like, "Oh, okay." That's pretty much all it takes to convince them. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, but it comes with a T-shirt and some stickers. 
but it's I try to make it as premium as I can make it. A nice experience. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's that's definitely a premium experience. I, I always try to like make good stuff. So I try to find the best people to make it. Actually, the guy who made me the, the helped me make the t-shirts, I think he went uh, MIA. I don't know where the fuck he's at. Oh no. I should probably check up on him. <laughs> you should. <laughs> that's actually fucked up. I haven't talked to him in a long time. And he has hey, posted on so Hey, you, hey you, are you, you still made alive? my merch. Like, you, you good, man? Yeah, he kind of just vanished. So I'll Got check up on him later. Got off into the mountains. Yeah, I'll check up on him later. So one of the things I like is talking with you about just nerd stuff, because you and I are like the only nerds. That's not true. There's multiple of us. He's actually a nerd. Yeah, he's kind of he's kind of a doofus. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a well, well, <laughs> doofus. <laughs> he's 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 a he's a funny guy. He's yeah, funny I love guy. him. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I don't really talk to him about other things like that. It's usually just you sometimes. Yeah, that's that's fair. Um, uh, but usually we can't like get into like a room like this. There's always people around us. You're always getting bothered because you're like the only person that can like do actual work. <laughs> the, you could call me the guy. Yeah, I'm you're the guy. you're the bro. You're the bro, dude. Oh, still how, weird. How does that feel, just like being the one to be dependent on, like almost all the time? Well, I mean, it's weird. They finally started giving me awards now that I went to freaking support. <laughs> no, really? Yeah. The other. So they gave me the. They gave me the top one of the top performer rewards for the TDY. Oh yeah, I was there. Um, I, there was one time I remember the first time you and I worked together, and it was like months ago. This was like I would I'd say like a year ago, right? It was like during Christmas. And I was put on an engine run with you. And one of the things that was hilarious was you got in the cockpit and I was on the headphones trying to talk to you and I couldn't hear you. And you're giving me some command that I just didn't understand. And I can easily tell that you were visibly angry at me. And I was like, oh, this guy's not happy with me. That, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, it, it's definitely, it's come up recently because we had like some newer people mids uh-huh my belief is that people should be experienced and like have they should i mean obviously with ltp uh lo was being put into like crew chief jobs and stuff yeah so i don't think it's not necessarily it's not fair that i was upset with you for not knowing how to crew chief but at the same time it's like i don't know if people are on working shifts they should know how to do stuff right like um uh, recently, I was getting upset with him because it's like, he's a crew chief, mm -hmm. he's on mids, and then I'd get paired with him and he doesn't know what the hell to do. He doesn't know how to do, do the jobs that we're doing. He doesn't know to like work on multiple things as like I'm working on something. He, he's not like asking questions. He's kind of just sitting there and watching, which I fucking hate. I hate when people just show up on a job and watch. They don't even like help. <laughs> Cause like you, again, you've probably seen me when I get like the dad look and it's just like, I'm minding my own business. And someone asks me a question and it's <laughs> yes. And they're just like, Oh, okay. No, I just, just need you to do this. Okay. I'll get to it. And then just like, they just become part of the environment again. Just not even there. I don't even want to acknowledge their, like you've seen it. You, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, but, I, I've only seen it once with, with like you back like a while ago, but when you and I were working in the same, you know, shift, I, 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 I never seen that side. I mean, you probably did that with the other crew chiefs. Usually when I come it's in- It's definitely a more of a mids thing. Like yeah. when I'm tired and just like, Ugh, I don't want to be here. But now you're on a different shift. You want support, you probably take like some time to relax. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm on my shift with, with swings. I'm definitely a, a swing shift sort of person. Nice. Uh, so on the topic of like training new people, do you think there's a way we can like fix that? I mean, there's so many three levels in, in our shop and they're in different shifts. Well, so, well, I mean, you, m my, my theory is the best way to teach them is to pair them with another you know, five level or seven level so that they can the... shadow them. But the problem is, you know, there's a bunch of moving pieces happening all the time. Yeah, and you, you also have to make production quotas. You, I mean, we have to make our sorties and stuff. Honestly, like when it comes to the training, uh, I think a lot of stuff is assumed. 
Because like when I went through, they they literally had us like change a tire. They had us like service a strut. They had us like do actual maintenance tasks when uh, when they trained my my class going through. Um, nowadays, like they send crew chiefs here, and it's like, hey, grab me this tool, and they're like, what's that? You don't know what's like in the box. You don't know the names of tools. No, they never taught us that. And a lot of that very simple back to basic stuff is kind of left for on the job training. And it shouldn't be. Just people getting comfortable with using their hands and being around the aircraft and like recognizing stuff, I think would definitely help. You should, you should keep your mic a little bit close to your face because, you're, because as you're talking like, my bad. No, it's yes. all good. Let's, but, let's uh, fix that bad behavior. Yeah, you're right. Keen. <laughs> but yeah, it, just the implementation and like we would have needed more people to to meet those kind of having a tail team with everyone available yes. on it. Or it would have been like a good a good idea, but they didn't <clears throat> make that happen. Yeah, the, the implementation and uh, there definitely should have been a grace period as well. Should have been like, hey, you need your five level in your core AFSC before we're going to push you to like learn every other job. See, I don't even know what jet I'm assigned. That that's how bad it is. Well, I think they I think they ramped it back to uh, DCC and ADCC. So I think it's back to a DCC and two ADCCs. Right. Okay. So there we don't even have like full tail teams anymore. I don't think. Anyway. <laughs> Let's just move on away from work. We're talking too much about work now. We're here, to, we're here to chillax, dude. We're here to fucking let our hair down. I have a question for you. Um, I have an answer. What are your top five favorite games? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, so I'm going to have to go with the uh, like individual games or like can we also do like game series? Do you want to do it? Would that be easier for you? Yes. Okay. So, favorite game series easily going to be the Ratchet and Clank series. Okay. Um, one of one of the first that was actually the first game that I ever got on PS2. When I got my PS2 for Christmas, at like I don't know six seven years old. Whenever it came, I think I think when I was five. But either way, um, I'd have to say the Spyro series is probably uh, second. After that, that was the first PlayStation game that I ever had uh, that was ever like actually given to me that I didn't just get with the system. <clears throat> uh, Halo's pretty good. Uh, Reach is obviously the best. Okay, yeah. Reach is the best. I'll fight anyone. I'll fight anyone on that. I mean, it's just a good story, honestly. It is, yes. Really, three's a close. Terrible. Three's a close second. Yeah. Um. I've actually just recently gotten into uh, Minesweeper. <laughs> I know that's so weird. I know that's so weird to like to, Not an to put out there. I was expecting, but uh, but okay, I dig it. Yeah, I. It's just it's just fun, kind of, because uh, it's a. I knew the word. It's not guessing. Like you know how to play Minesweeper, right? I'm familiar with the rules. Well, the rules are the how to play. Okay, I'm familiar with the mechanics. Okay, that's that that covers both. Yeah, I just I started playing mine. mine so I like I'd known for a little bit how it's supposed to be played. Now, how many hours would you put into Minesweeper? God. Maybe maybe like recently, over the course of playing it for like a week. I don't know, maybe like an hour. Because like uh, you would sit down and play Minesweeper for an hour. Maybe maybe. Oh, you mean, I thought you meant like total. No, at like a time, maybe like 20, 30 minutes. Uh, the quickest game that I have right now is like 450 seconds. So that's just under, well, five minutes is, is 300 seconds. So it's like approximately like se a seven minute game. Yeah. So Minesweeper is one of them. Yeah, I, I like it. It's a... Uh, very unexpected. Yeah, it's... Uh, I don't know. I, I got weird answers for a lot of stuff. Um, I guess that's four. Yeah, that's four. Um, Honestly, Minecraft. Okay, so you, 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 you're a bit of a blockhead, huh? You're a crafter, yeah, huh? Yeah. I'm not I'm not like super creative with it. Like that's something I've tried make uh, getting better at. 
Um, me and a couple of friends, we actually had a server uh, for a little bit. Uh, something that we're also supposed to not, we're supposed to learn how to not do when public speaking. Uh, 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 no, you're, um, dude, this is, this is uh, a fucking, there it was again. this is a podcast. Uh, they, they can't see you yet because they haven't even seen the video yet. Yeah, that's fair. In the future, uh, not good for public speaking. We had a, we had a server and it was actually a fairly decent world. Uh, I was able to mine down fairly deep, find a whole bunch of cave systems, get lost in them. Found like a uh, an amethyst room, just right. basically just there. Broke into it one time, and it was purple, and it was like, oh, that's cool. Little a little neat experience. Yeah, actually, trying... as, we're, as we're talking about Minecraft, <laughs> they're they're doing the mob boat. Yes. What do you What do you want to win? I f I just want all of them. Why oh. can't they just have all of them? Uh, an armadillo and a penguin would be cool. What's the third one? I uh, it's a hermit one. crab. Yes, the crab. The, the crab's mechanic is you kill it and then you get like a second reach. Yeah. You get more reach, which is cool, but... I am trying to think of the um, the the use for that. Mining more blocks in PvP battles would be amazing. Okay, that's a fair point. Because then the, the penguin is... Doesn't do in, shit. Yeah, basically. It makes your it's boat go faster. Just a penguin. But that's only if you're in Arctic region regions. Yeah, super specific. Very specific. The armadillo's cool. Those dillers are just cool. Yeah, well, my beef with the... My beef with the mob boat has always been... They have, like, these awesome choices. And, I, A, they don't pick all of them. They, someone always ends up picking the worst one out of the bunch. Yeah, I, I've never really understood that snuffler thing. Like, I forget what the other two mobs were for that vote. But like the snuffler, it's like okay, it finds mystery seeds. I think it, I think I think it's just to be like I think it's just to have some more megafauna in the game. That's honestly the only thing, and it's super rare to find too. It's not even like something you can just find. It's not something you just happen upon in the woods. Yeah, which is kind of stinky. But I I think they can definitely into I think they can definitely add more of that. But have you uh, have you ever played uh, Tech It? Yeah. I played a little bit of it. Not really my cup of thing, because it's just loaded with so many fucking mechanics. Correct. That just makes it almost impossible to figure out. It, it is very city, overwhelming. Which is why my favorite modded game of Minecraft to play is this thing called Bit Better Minecraft. It's kind of like Vanilla Plus, but it adds so much more to it. All the all the mob boat, uh, mobs in it, just more mobs, more biomes, more cave systems. It's a lot of fun, and it's amazing. And it it works just like Minecraft. It builds up, then it gets even crazier with like magic and shit. Cause yeah, I, I think you would love that more than anybody. Probably, cause uh, cause I mean, when I was playing Tech it, I kind of just played around with like the ICBMs and stuff, and like the laser designators. <laughs> yeah, but that's I did. Right. I did actually I forgot, play like I forgot the, all the uh, crazy mechanics that are in the, that. The the standard, um, like survival. And there was just, when you have 120 pages of blocks to choose from, it's like, I... It's just, it's honestly intimidating, and, and I, 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 I would have better luck playing fucking Space Station 13 than actually playing Tekken Minecraft. Yeah, because I, the the one last bit that I kind of have about that is I found like myself in a pocket dimension once. I just found like a weird portal in like the side of a, uh, like a hill or something. Don't, don't you just hate that when you go like, into pocket dimensions in Minecraft, don't you? Don't you yeah, just fucking... and it just brought me to, like, the Shadow Realm. <laughs> like, I'm not even kidding. It was just like, just, here you go, Jimbo, straight to the Shadow Realm. And not there were, like, these monoliths that were just, not like, himself staring said, at me. Send that fucker to the fucking Shadow Dimension. But, yeah, you had to go through these mazes in these, like, obstacle courses to get out. Or like, to, I just to want... get the prize, I should say, because it was like you had to like move through before it like blew up, and then you couldn't get to the next one. And I got to like the third one, and then it blew up, and I basically had to like jump off to get back to the real world. In the meanwhile, you're just trying to get cobblestone for your castle. Yeah, I know. The, uh, what's the uh, what's the largest thing you've ever made in Minecraft? I I love building like Cre creative or or story. 
Well, I love building castles, like just manors upon like, like, you know, the, like the shores of lakes. I always title them like just manor or something like purple manor and there's nothing purple on the castle. <laughs> and sometimes I also like to build like almost akin to like, like world wonders. Like sometimes I like to build like lighthouses, like really giant lighthouses, lighthouses made of cool. like wood and stone. <laughs> I just like doing that. I think that probably might be the biggest one I've built. There it's was just a, a giant fucking dick. Like shape. Someone said it's it just was an a, uncolored creeper. Yeah, that's what it is. Um there was a cuz my friend had Minecraft uh, when I was growing up. I didn't have it. And one time I spent actually like 8 hours building a castle out of cobblestone. It was in creative or yeah, creative. Uh, 16,000 blocks. Wow. For the floor and the walls because I built it in a... It was all cobblestone. Yeah, well, walls, it was it was all uh, mossy, co mo mossy cobblestone. <laughs> but, uh, because it looks all, better. It was, all, it was all mossy cobblestone. But, uh... You gotta add variation, dude. You gotta, like... Well, there was, there was, um... Obsidian around the bottom. Because you don't want no one breaking into your Correct. castle. But I built it in a octagon shape 64 blocks per side interesting and so building up the walls like 10 high that's what eventually built it up to 16,000 blocks of cobblestone eight, for this floor and the walls eight hours work of just of just nonsense huh i've just just you, you get out of your chair your your ass is sticking to it it's like your knees are weak it's like you're dehydrated and shit. <laughs> well, what ended up happening is his mom came downstairs and she's like, What the fuck are you doing? Why are you still awake? I was like, oh, I'm just playing Minecraft. She's like, it's six in the morning. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it is. She's like, you need to go to bed. I was like, yeah, I probably. should do that. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I think I might have asked you this before, but where are you from? So I am from upstate New York. Upstate New York. Uh, okay. Born in Auburn, then lived out in a place called Skinny Alice for a while. Uh, lived in Camillus for a little bit, and then before I moved to the military, I was out in Syracuse for about nine years. <clears throat> Sy Syracuse, what? Syracuse, New York. Okay, so you've always been in... So you, a majority of life has been in New York. Yeah, just, just different places in New York. Okay. So when did you come here to Arizona? I got here in Arizona at the tail end of 19. Okay. Like literally like December of 19 is when I moved out here. Interesting. Obviously for work. I was over at the 63rd first. Uh-huh. Uh, really? Yeah. Neat. It wasn't, it wasn't bad when I was there. Okay, yeah. Um, and then I got moved over to the 308th after certain events and people needing to be moved around. That was in 21. Yes, that was in 21. 2020? 21. Well, how are you like it in Arizona? Uh, it's very beige. Yeah. It's to blend uh, I, in. I, defi I definitely miss the, uh, the greenery. I mm -hmm. definitely miss forest and I miss water. Absolutely understand where you're coming from. But I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot to do. It's very outdoors and open. Um, which that can actually segue into the other into into the stuff that I brought. Absolutely. Yeah. Very I like being able to go out into, you know, the desert, just walk around, range, go shooting essentially wherever I want to. That's that's nice. Florida, it was very, um, cause that's where I, that's where I was before moving out here. That Florida. Was, is that when you're doing your training or is that just like? That was five and a half years at Eglin. Okay. Okay. So this is even your second. Okay. So, so this, this is, is your my second, second enlistment. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Yeah. Well, how'd you like Florida? Florida wasn't bad either. Uh, because, because I got mom, cause, cause I got family that lives out in Navarre. So, I mean, I, I love going over there. In that little panhandle region of the uh, the only thing that sucked was the humidity. That's stinky sometimes. Yeah, 
I could uh, really. I, that's, that's something I definitely appreciate out here is I can work for a couple of hours out on the line. And then that's like, that's when I get like sweaty. Or at the most, like my face will sweat if, if I'm, I'm like in the sun. I mean, if Florida, <laughs> I, I went the like 25 feet from my apartment door to my car and I was already drenched. And it's like, I haven't even got to work yet. This is bullshit. See, this is one of the things about being fat. Um, even if I'm in Florida or here, I'm, I'm still going to sweat. Oh, I'm, I'm a heavy sweater as well. You really? Does your hands get all clammy too? But they don't get clammy, but like... I, just you, even you know being what like it's warm back in support and like my hands will be all sweaty and it's like this is this is gross like i'll just be sitting there like on the computer and like i'll feel like a drop hit my side and it's like <laughs> this is so gross i'm not even working why am i like this the pro the problem with life <laughs> i, I know. with being a sweater you know other people you know hey we don't we might not have enough food to eat tonight i guess we'll have to be on like half rations or i don't know if i'll make this payment I'm sweat so much. I'm sticky. Ah, white privilege. I'm not yeah, doing that one. That's a good idea. I, I could, I could, <laughs> I got but to, I'm not gonna. You know what's funny? I, so sometimes I get people with that, and I immediately like you, motherfucker, <laughs> you fucker, you, you evil, white guilt. See, you know what you need to do for one of your podcasts. You just need to have a live stream, or you, or do a recording. A bunch of people from work doing Cards Against Humanity. Yeah, I'm thinking about... I have the bigger blacker box. I have the big black box. So I have a whole game, bunch of... I mean, is that game even popular anymore? Yes. Really? They still sell, I mean... I mean, I know they still sell them, but is it like... Well, no, it's not a matter of they still sell them. It's they still sell uh, expansion packs for it. Yeah, I mean, I know that they sell expansion pack, but like, is anybody really making videos on Cards Against Humanity anymore? I mean, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen videos of Cards Against... I haven't looked either, though. But um, they they were like a they're, few. They're, they keep making copies of it. Let's just put it like that. It's still popular enough to where they're making uh, copies of Cards Against Humanity. Right. That's a, that, that's the thing with like that game really launched and inspired a bunch of other people to me. Like I can make my own card game that's also got the N word in it. I can do that. <laughs> yeah, totally. Fuck it. And then it just spawned like a bunch of Cards Against Humanity clones. Even though I think that was also a clone of Apples and Apples, right? It, it was inspired by it, yes. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> is, is it called Apples Apples or is it just called... Apples to Apples. Ah, okay, that's what it is, yeah. My family, um, I, I hate playing board games with my family sometimes. I do. No, it, well, it's it's playing that game I hate because that game's just lame. Because I'm a very just like broken person. I'm just like, women are dumb. <laughs> got crude humor and I just got like a monkey brain that's <laughs> like I can only laugh if there's a homophobic slur in there oh my god I'm sorry I just can't anyway uh. so one of your hobbies um your hob so one of your hobbies you were mentioning was outdoors so how often do you go out and just uh, I'm definitely trying to go out more um especially now since it's starting to cool off yeah it's starting to cool off uh kind of focusing more on the survivalism aspect. Okay. I'm um, trying to get out, train with my gear, trying to get all that stuff set up, perfected. Uh, need to focus on getting like more food and stuff. Right. Uh, need to restock on ammo or at least have like, uh, you know, just like an emergency stock of it. Um, been getting into, getting into night vision recently. Been getting that, that into- interval isn't working for some reason. <laughs> So night vision. Yeah, night vision. Okay, show me this thing. All right, so that is my ballistic helmet. This is a real ballistic helmet because yep. it's very heavy. How much does this cost you? 800. Eight, 800 bucks for the helmet? Where'd you get it? Uh, so that that's from a site uh, from a company known as uh, Shellback Tactical. Is that a, what symbol is that? I'm so that is the Imperial Aquila okay. from uh, Warhammer. Interesting. It, from a distance, you could you could mistake it for something else. It's when I well, get when we get to at, the war. Well, at first, aspect. I thought it was like the eagle that like pressed upon the Triforce in, in Zelda. I was okay, like, oh, much that. much more innocent than uh, yeah. But now that you say that, I'm like, oh, okay. That's yeah, more you put racist. a circle underneath it, and it looks a little uh, suspicious. Yes, it does. Um, 
But yeah, that's actually that was actually you, you can try it if you you'll have to undo the uh, oh, chin strap. Yeah, that makes, that makes you'll kind of have to put it on from like the back to the front because of the nape protector. But yeah, that so that's actually a relatively cheaper helmet. I feel safe. You against a pistol round, you you would be. All right, let's put it to the test. <laughs> if you have eight hundred dollars to, and I've also if I can survive. But um. But yeah, like the the more expensive uh, helmets, like Ops Core, or like Team Wendy, those are two other companies. They're like two thousand dollars for a helmet. Now, do, now do these actually supply the military with these? Uh, Ops Core, just... I think Ops Core does. Ops Core does actually supply the military with ballistic helmets. Okay, so but this again, is something that you could take in a war zone. This isn't something that's like a I'd cheap... be comfortable wearing it in. If if I needed to protect my head, I'd be comfortable wearing. Gotcha. It. Which so. Um, I don't know if you, <laughs> so I, I did say ballistic helmet. So there's ballistic helmets and there's, uh, what's known as a bump helmet. Bump helmet's basically like a glorified yeah, bike know. helmet. Yeah. Uh, no ballistic protection at all. And even of then course. those are still relatively expensive. But yeah, then on the front you have where the, uh, the night vision mounts. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have that? Do I don't have, have it with me. <laughs> okay. Is that little comm system right there? Uh, that's a light. Oh, that's a light. Oh, they had that. I can see that now. Ooh. Red light, and then if you hold it down, it goes to a white light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is pretty fucking neat. I love this a lot. Yeah, so, hey, so you, uh, you've probably seen it. So you know the headset that, um, Adams has, right? That, like, coyote brown, like... Yes. Uh, electronic headset that he yeah, has. Yeah. So those, I want to get a pair of those, but those are like, you want? I don't. I don't know if you're ready for it. Well, I guess I am now. You are now. So those are like six hundred dollars a piece. Okay. That is a six hundred dollar headset that he wears to. So what? So what's so special about those headsets? So it's it's electronic hearing protection. Okay. So it's got microphones that allow you to hear when there's not loud noises around. But once there's loud noises, it shuts off the the microphone, and then it acts as hearing protection. Interesting. But the cool thing about them is that they can be hooked into a radio, so your headset can act as your comms. Which again is why six hundred dollars, and they sell it to the U.S. government. That that's okay. So it just has active noise cancellation. Yeah. Very I mean good active noise cancellation and it's got multi-directional like I will have uh, to, microphones I will have to put those to the test compared to my Bose headphones because <laughs> I can tell you right now the ones I got are pretty good too <laughs> I mean I don't know if they can go up against a fucking jet but but why would you need to buy this for outdoors ship survivalism <laughs> okay if uh you know sus anything uh because I mean when I first started survive my my prepping and survivalism is zombies uh, that's that's not likely because to the happen. first because the first thing a zombie is gonna do is go straight to the head. Well, other people. Well, yeah. You have to worry about other people in the zombie apocalypse. Like the Walking Dead doesn't refer to the zombies, you know no, that, right? Yeah. Or walkers, right. as they're called. Um, but yeah, uh, used to be about zombies, and then societal collapse, uh, natural disasters, stuff like that. Makes sense, dude. No, I like it. It's cool. Yeah, I've actually got a set of goggles on the way. Because uh, the, fir the first one that I bought, it's known as a uh, AN PVS-14. And it's a monocular. So it's about a half foot long scope that sits in front of your eye. And that's, and where, that's, that's your night, night vision. vision. Yeah, but you're getting another one that's both. Yeah, so it'll be it'll be essentially be two PVS fourteens on a bridge and okay. it'll be over both eyes. Right. And then I got like the, the laser for my rifle that I'm able to see under the night vision. It's a what, IR laser. What what type of what, what what type of rifle do you have? Many. <laughs> Many? I'm I'm a I'm a firearms enthusiast as well. Uh, I've got AR fifteen, have a broke ass AK. That that doesn't work anymore. Got a uh, Tavor X95, um, M1A. That one's my favorite. Uh, got a bolt action. Got shotgun. 
1911, a uh, Ruger Blackhawk, M1 Carbine clone, Mosin Nagant. It's got a got a fairly decent collection. <clears throat> All right. I like that. Yeah. Good guns are cool. I like guns. Yeah, they're... Uh, I, I, I don't know the name specifically, but I do like things when they go explosives. That That is true. That is a uh, good... How often does, like, just prices of guns just go up? Because I know there was, like, a stunt where, like, a lot of this was just getting expensive for, like, a while. Like, there was just no ammunition at all. Uh, so it depends. Have you ever come to that problem lately? Not recently. Ammo has definitely gotten uh, cheaper, depending on the ammo. So if you're if you're trying to get anything that's Russian, obviously <laughs> it it's sense. very difficult to find. It makes total sense. Um, so... Yeah, that's basically impossible to find. Finding, like, actual Russian uh, AKs on the market is very difficult, and they've gone up in price. Uh, stuff like stuff that's American, like 223 or 556, um, 45, stuff like that, that's not as good as it used to be, but it's uh, not as bad as it used to be, if that makes any sense. Which I actually have to go and trying to go shooting next weekend so so as survivalists um have you like what skills have you developed do you know how to start <laughs> fire not as many as i would like uh i've definitely more come on Kian. yeah i know well that's what i'm trying to get better at um so i've definitely focused more on like the gear and stuff obviously uh-huh but i am trying to get out more and like learn uh bushcraft trying to learn I do want to learn how to like hunt and skin animals and stuff, um, cook them, uh, d field dress them and all that stuff. I uh, do need to learn a little bit more medical stuff. I mean, we do get the T triple C every year. Yeah, T triple C, our first aid yeah, stuff every year. Um, but it definitely helps to know more about that. So yeah, uh, s skills are definitely lacking, but me acknowledging that is... Did, did you ever like join the Boy Scouts when you were young? Uh, I was in Civil Air Patrol. What is that? It's uh, surprising how few people... It's the Air Force Auxiliary. So it's civilians who do uh, small jobs that the Air Force is like too busy to do. So like search and rescue, like searching for like forest fires and stuff like um that just sounds like something that the guard should be able to do yeah but it, it it's kind of so it was started in uh world war ii interesting actually and it was for maritime patrol actually it was for searching up and down the coast for german submarines and reporting them in which they actually I think they reported in like 120 something German submarines Holy fuck. and actually engaged one because they would be flying around in these Piper Cub uh, single seat or two seater single engine airplanes with a torpedo longer than the fucking plane. <laughs> and if they were able to line up a shot on a, a German U boat, they were able to take the shot and one, one actually did. That's crazy. But yeah, now it's more so like they, uh, they also got called up during 9 11. Uh -huh. They did patrols over uh, the U.S., making sure that all flights were grounded after, you know, uh, the the attacks occurred. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's it's done by civilians and, so like, retired. You, so you were doing that for how long? Four years? How old were you? Uh, started when I was 14, I think. You were a 14 little chap? Yeah, and then I started, and then after, when I joined the military, that's obvious, because it is, that's when I left. Okay, yeah, makes sense. But it definitely helped me going through basic, because it is, it is run, like, you wear the uniforms, you, you do, like, the facing movements, you know the ranks, like, all that stuff. So, like, going through, and they're like, this is how you do, like, this is about how you do facing movements, and I just, like, knew how to do it. So this is just a more epic version of the RTC. Yeah, <laughs> you, you could say that. They're, they're dev Some people were also in ROTC, JROTC or whatever. Busy bees. 
Yeah, they were. Uh, those were the tryhards. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ROTC kids. Half of them, like almost all of them, didn't even go in the Air Force. Yeah, I know. It was, it was just the one guy, just the one dude that was like, "Yeah, I guess I'll do it." Yeah. God bless those ROTC guys. I, I, hope, I hope those kids are doing all right. I really do. I don't think they are. I don't. I think you're right. I think they're not doing great, man. Oy vey. <laughs> wow, you had a busy life. How old are you? I'm 28. You're 28. <laughs> Rad. Cool. How does it feel? You're gonna be 20. You you're gonna be 30 soon. <laughs> Don't remind me. The uh, the week that I left, uh, I was pushing a a night cart, a friggin' night cart, and I felt my good knee pop <laughs> and, and snap and crackle. It was a it was a Rice Krispie treat, and it was just like, <laughs> no, this can't be happening. That's the good knee. Uh, I wanna I wanna ask you a serious question. Who do you think is going to win the Game of the Year awards? I don't even know who's <laughs> in the running. Uh, well, I mean, what releases have we had this year? I mean, well, we there's had... been three releases that have caught most people's eyes. It's probably going to be Baldur's Gate. It was Baldur's Gate is a good contender. It used to be Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> that I think would have been. I forgot well, that been came game out the, this year. That that would have been Game of the Year had Baldur's Gate not come out, which I think that they're going to win. But there's also another game that came out, uh, Starfield, that's also in the race. Yeah, I've also heard some some mixed reviews about it, though. Yeah. It, it is very early for a Bethesda game, so it's like, eh, eh. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, with Bethesda in their past entries, almost all of their games have made Game of the Year, except for the last couple, which was Fallout 4, and we don't even know what's going to happen with Starfield. That's wild that Star uh, Fallout 4 didn't make it. No, because well, I can understand seventy six wouldn't make it. Yeah, I can understand Outer Worlds probably, because that was like, well, Outer, Outer Worlds, Worlds was Bethesda, wasn't it? No, it was it, it was Obsidian. That was well. Obsidian's, I mean, they also made the Fallout games. Yeah. Well, the thing about uh, Outer Worlds is it's not that great, <laughs> so it wasn't gonna win anyway. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand that. They they they, they sold a. A forty dollar game. Well, they they called it a, a a double A game. I don't even know what that means. It's just the in between between an A game and a triple A game. So even then, they were setting the expectations really low. So Outer Worlds was not going to win no matter what. Right. I don't I don't know what won during those years, but I forgot. It was either The Last of Us Part Two. Well, I know one of those won. And some other game that I can't even remember, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I think this is gonna be a pretty interesting year for that entry anyway. For for those entries, Tears of the Kingdom, Baldur's Gate, and as I'm, I'm I think Starfield might might make it in the league. I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't because I don't think it deserves it. AC Six just comes out of nowhere and just oh yeah, Armor Core too. That forgot about that one. You were talking about that too. Oh yeah, it'd be be my, because it was I asked, beating my ass. Because I asked you like years. Because I asked you like a, like a little bit ago, like what game are you excited for? And you and you said Armor Core Six. I was like, what the fuck is that? And then you said it's like, what did you say? I, th I probably just like, probably just that it was a mech game, but it was also very hard. I think you told me it was like Dark Souls, but with mechs. This one is yes. Okay. But the they, other uh, I, ID was, Entertain ID Entertainment definitely uh, made it more of a Souls like this time around mm -hmm. compared to the old ones, right? Uh, which is surprising because the old ones were also super difficult. But this one is like this one's easier than the other ones, but it is still very much a Souls game. Okay, because like in the old ones, you could literally lose the game by sucking too much. <laughs> That's just disrespectful, honestly. <laughs> it is. Uh, because every every mission, your repairs and your ammo costs are taken out of your paycheck. So you could literally accrue too much debt okay. to continue on as a, as a mercenary. That and you would sense. just lose the game. You'd have to I restart. I actually love that mechanic a lot. 
I, I, I kind of do like the mechanic because it's consequence. It's, I was like, yeah, you, yeah, you better it's get like, good, Walker. Yeah, here's the punishment for not playing well enough. See, games don't have that lose. anymore. It's just, that's what I'm saying. Games don't have that anymore. I, I admit, because one of my friends asked me recently, he was like, hey, so like, how would you like to play uh, a game in, on like any on NES level? You just don't have a save. And when you die, you just have to restart. I was like, so I've done that with Sega. I've played the original Sonic, and that is... Yeah, that's I, stinky. Sonic games, dude. That's, that's another topic you're talking about. It's fucking Sonic the Hedgehog. You know, uh, you know how, why he was created? Is just well, they want well, Sega wanted to compete with Nintendo, so but they need to make a mascot for it, obviously. And they try their hands with a bunch of different mascots. Sonic landed. I'm sure that's not the full story, but I'm sure there's different. So it's actually because of speedrunners. Or part of the story, I should say, is because of speedrunners. Okay. Because people uh, were speedrunning Mario. Interesting. And so they made a game based around how quickly you could complete the levels. Which is why Sonic is based on speed. That's very interesting. That's why you get rewarded for completing the levels quick as possible. Have you have, have you ever played uh, Baldur's Gate 3? I haven't either. I, heard I, it's, I play I heard actual it's, D&D. So. I, heard it's, I heard it's great, and I do want to try it eventually. Yeah, I mean, I've At only least. heard good things about it. Yeah. Have you played Tears of the Kingdom? I have not. I recommend you play it. It's the only game I to recommend be fair, people I didn't, to play. I didn't play the, the original. I didn't play uh, Breath of the Wild. You know, that's one of the things about Tears of the Kingdom I think is special, is you don't have to play it like Breath of the Wild to enjoy Tears of the Kingdom. In fact, I kind of encourage people not to play that game and just go straight to Tears of the Kingdom. Good to know. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Because, you know, we use the same map. And so if you play Breath of the Wild, then you go jump to Tears of the Kingdom. You kind of know where everything's at at, at a moment. It's like, oh, well, I kind of know where this is at. I'm going to go there now. Instead of just letting it all be a mystery. Gotcha. Because that's where the game shines, is through the exploration. Ex... <laughs> exploration of the game is where it shines the most i love games with just just shit to go see through. i i'm kind of the i i hate i hate it but i'm the opposite like i hate games when when games have too much really yeah because like far cry for example right okay um there's so many times where i've played far cry and it's like oh you have to get to like this objective oh you can only get to the bottom of the mountain and then you spend half an hour just climbing up this this one mountain to get something. Oh, cool! I got the collectible. Well, that's like the specialty about Tears of the Kingdom is you can go on that mountain any way you like. Which definitely helps. But, but I was gonna I was gonna go into that because then it's like, oh hey, this other collectible is like close to me. All right, cool. Just jump off the mountain and glide over, and then you just land at the collectible, and it's like, well, that that was helpful. So glad, uh, yep, yep, the, uh, the developers put probably like 45 minutes of content into getting up to this one, but, uh, I just skipped it all. Yeah. And I mean, I get it. They put the effort into like the environment and stuff, but it's like, I, I don't care. No, yeah. I don't, I don't look off the side of the digital mountain in a video game and it's like, oh, that's like a nice view. It's no, I'm just trying to get this thing that you put up here for no reason. I like that. It's just, it's not really a chore or Zelda, it's just, you know, sometimes there's little distractions that get you by. And it's like, okay, yeah, it doesn't really ruin anything for me. But I think there's like, I think there's another game that does exploration a little bit better than Zelda, and that's uh, Outer Wilds. You, you ever heard of that game? Yes. Very, very short game. Well, it's not short. It is short. It's like, you, you, you probably beat the game like 12 hours, but you're just a little spaceman. You're going around the solar system, going on planets and shit. It's cute. It's wholesome. There's like mystery to it. There's a lot to discover. I love that. I, I love like worlds that have like a lot of stuff in them. Speaking of which, I want to talk to you about your next hobby that I think is probably going to take up the majority of the time. <laughs> probably. Uh, Warhammer. Okay. Okay. Um... Yeah, just, yeah, just pull it out for us, because, because I, 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 I want to see these. All right. Okay, so 
<laughs> I didn't. I didn't bring too many. I didn't want to like focus super much on this. No. For, because I I can talk for hours about this stuff and no one no one wants that. See that's yeah. Not in not in this setting. No. We're, this is a podcast. They're gonna hear everything. <laughs> you have them wrapped up. Eh, vaguely. Oh, so I don't even know where to. I have like a vague collection of across like all the the stuff that I work on. So, uh, well, the, the first thing I'll I'll, I'll I'll bring out miniatures as you ask me questions. Okay. About okay. It. So the first thing I want to know is. The way I see it from an outsider's perspective is that there are two sides of this hobby. There's the figurine painting and collecting, and then there's the actual game itself. There's three. So there's three parts of the hobby. Is is that is the last part of the hobby, uh, the learning and the lore? Yeah, so the, it'd, it'd be the lore, because okay. there, there are people who are in this hobby who just focus on the lore. They like the okay. stories, they like the information about it. I do. I I am like multifaceted. I do. I do the lore. I do. I obviously paint the miniatures. I enjoy painting them. I don't play as much as I would like to, and not that I win anyway. I, but I do play the game. I imagine it's difficult to sit down and play the game because you have to first find a guy, and they have to. Well, they have to all kind of just agree to just be at one place. Uh, there's actually a fair, there's a lot, there's a fairly rich community around here. Yeah. Uh, there's usually like games going on at like Imperial Outpost. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is the Warhammer store right down from the base. There's usually games going on. It's more so the, the interacting with other nerds that I'm kind of like, mm, <laughs> Some of them are, are more freaks than you are. I wouldn't say that. It's just, <laughs> we're, we're all kind of awkward people and uh -huh. like dealing with people that I don't know too well that's yeah that that's honestly been like uh just going out and meeting people is kind of what's prevented me from going out and playing more I think I think what I'm gonna do is one day I'm just, just gonna roll into like a deep to a Warhammer sesh with like a varsity jacket my hair is spiked up I'm like <laughs> what's with all these fucking nerds put playing Warhammer and then I bring out my collection of Warhammer figurines like get fucked <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna learn the game. I mean, you could try. You, you yeah. could try that. I don't know how that would work for you, but okay. So there are three aspects to this hobby: the painting, the lore, and also the game. Um, I mean, I just don't know where to start because because I know there's a lot that goes into this. I've seen the memes. I've seen you know the TikTok edits. I I, I guess I can give you like a a brief over like a brief overview of too long dinner read. Go ahead and give me the lore real quick. Can you summarize something for me? We'll oh, I wish I had just like, so the beginning of the books are actually do, at the beginning of every Warhammer book, it kind of gives like the overall plot where it's, so like humanity's re, humanity has reached out to the stars. There's a myriad of threats. Humanity is only held together by the person, by the, by the figure known as the emperor. Who, and he is a sort of immortal being that has been on earth for a long time right yes he's he's he you could call him a god but he wouldn't want you to call him a god but people are going to call him a god he well when you're you know 12 Be feet tall in golden armor and you have a golden light around you it's like please do not call me a god and then everyone's like this guy's obviously a fucking god Come yeah 100 percent. like he's that type of, of humble dude yeah he, he was also very he he liked science he okay. wanted rational thought mm-hmm but uh, so the emperor has sat on the golden throne for 10,000 years. The golden throne power is what's known as the Astronomicon. Uh, if you've ever seen, have you ever seen the movie Event Horizon? No, I've heard of it. So basically in Event Horizon, they create this ship that can travel uh, through like an alternate dimension by opening up black holes. Uh huh. But the alternate dimension is essentially hell. So the crew that first goes through get basically like possessed by demons and they have like a murder orgy and all this bad shit happens and the ship gets possessed. Okay. Comes back out, so a crew is sent to investigate it and they find like the one survivor who's batshit insane and he tries to like turn everyone else batshit insane as well. That's basically what is the warp in Warhammer 40,000, which the Astronomicon basically acts as a psychic lighthouse in the warp. So people can still travel through it, 
And by judging their distance from the Astronomicon and their position from it, they can travel throughout the the galaxy so faster than light. So that's how they're able to go to places around the ga- the galaxy. Yeah. Now, is it just one galaxy or is it multiple galaxies? It's, it's just our galaxy. Okay, so just the Milky Way. Okay. <clears throat> I was about to say, if it's multiple galaxies, then that will be fucked. That'd be a little insane. Yeah, no. Once you get outside the galaxy, you it, the because it is it, it it's literally like a light in a storm. Yeah. The farther you get away from it, the the dimmer it gets. Uh huh. But again, it is also only one do like well, the emperor used to power it by himself, but since he's basically he's dead but alive at the same time. Okay, so this so we're jumping here because I I am familiar with some of the aspects. I know that towards the future. He is sort of in this like unconscious state where he is just a husk of a person, but he is powering this thing. Yeah, he's alive but dead. Okay. His physical body is basically dead, but his soul is like kept in the body. Okay. Um, and then he's powered by psychers. So humans at this point have become psychic, but it's just like a very it's a very small amount. But they have to be hooked into the throne to essentially keep him alive for him to keep powering the Astronomicon. So and he grows ever hungrier. Yeah, okay. So it's like a thousand psychers a day need to be sacrificed to keep him alive. What's like the span? Like what? Like how many years would you say that this was all condensed? Into? Like was this, this would be like 10,000 years, 30,000 years? So that, that gets into like a whole other can of worms. But essentially at the, at the end of the 20,000s, humanity fell because there was a robot uprising that really weakened us. And then one of the chaos gods, uh, Slanesh, was started to be was started being created by the Eldar, which are basically the space elves. Um, when it was being created, it created warp storms, which caused interstellar travel to fall. And with the fall of interstellar travel, the human government fell. So all the planets were separated from each other, thinking they were basically like the only ones left. Mm. Uh, demons like destroyed planets, like a whole bunch of bad shit just happened all at once. Uh, until finally it was basically like Earth and Mars thought they were like of the soul system. They thought they were the only ones left. Um, it basically became like a Mad Max, like post-apocalyptic hellscape on Earth. Uh, with like chaos taking over and like possessing people like the oceans dried up in the nuclear wars and like all sorts of crazy bad shit just happened um eventually slanesh was born and uh devoured most of the eldar souls in the galaxy uh warp storms are gone interstellar travel was capable again that's when the emperor rose up reconquered earth this was in like the third this was in like the 31,000s or so um retook earth started his uh great crusade again hey don't call me a god but my war is called the crusade um to reunite humanity which went for about 200 years until around like the 32,000s and then uh, the sons that he cre- he created, twenty one sons, two of them were twins. Would you say created? What does that mean? From the ground up. Okay. Like so genetically, like, like from the table, pretty much. Yeah, from from the ground up, like throwing chemicals at each other to make to make life. Interesting. But then he also did put warp stuff in them, so they were essentially like, you could call them like greater demons of order. But so all of them were psychic. All of them had like this alternate dimension shit put into them. This was in opposition of the chaos gods, which he was trying to defeat. Uh, one of them, well, essentially one of them viewed him as a god. He did not like this, so he basically burned that dude's favorite city to the ground, being like, "Hey, I told you not to do this." Here is your punishment. Get back on track. You're falling behind your brothers and reconquering worlds. He was very, that, that son was very religious. And so basically having his God come down and punish him, like mentally broke him. His adoptive fathers, 
stepped in and they were like, hey, um, isn't it crazy how every like planet that we've conquered has like this religion that mirrors our religion from our planet? He's like, that is really weird. And they're like, we know a place where you can go and talk to actual gods. And so they basically had, they turned him to chaos. He then corrupted one of his other brothers who was like the emperor's favorite. And they showed him the current setting of Warhammer 40,000 where everything's a shit show and where he's forgotten. And he was like, hey, this is kind of, and where the emperor's viewed as a god. And he's like, hey, the emperor's just using us to achieve like godhood and then he's going to discard us and like make everyone forget about us. So then he started the heresy, the Horus heresy, named after him, even though it was the other guy who started it, essentially. But uh, I think it was like seven, seven or eight years of war. The emperor gets mortally wounded and gets put on the golden throne. And then that brings us to the year 42,000 where the current setting is. Yeah, that was, that was a whole bunch of info dump and that was a whole lot of that that was the too long didn't read see i know there's more to the story because i can tell that you're holding back a lot and you know i i love worlds that have like a lot of lore to them i would say i'm an expert in elder scrolls and fallout lore but like i i know i got nothing on fucking warhammer because i know that there's a whole bunch of it's it it has also had 40 years to build up yeah like obviously so, okay, so it's called Warhammer 40,000. I'm not sure if I'm correct, but there are different types of Warhammer series. Yes, so there's Warhammer Fantasy, which is, you know, based off of Lord of the Rings, you know. Okay. It's standard humans, standard elves, orcs, undead. Uh, there's like giants and dragons and all sorts of different stuff. Technically, uh, Warhammer Fantasy is no more. It turned into Warhammer Age of Sigmar. That is the current iteration of it. Um, and then Warhammer 40,000 is basically just Warhammer Fantasy, but in space and 40,000 years into our future. Okay, so do these all take place in the same universe? Chaos does. Chaos is the same across fantasy and sci-fi. And, does, and technically there's, so there is also Blood Bowl, which Blood Bowl is fantasy football, literally fantasy football. You, but it's also post-apocalyptic. Wait, okay, so hold on. So you know tabletop you football games? Yeah. It's that, but with Warhammer miniatures. Interesting. Now are these actual like football players that we know of or are they they're based off of them okay so like there's i can't remember the name of it but they're based off of like the steelers so their uniforms are like iron gray interesting um because it is a post-apocalyptic earth okay like the governing body is called the nuffle nfl <laughs> i was gonna say but there's also like no rules to it so like you can literally murder other players and it's just part of the game. Wow. But the most popular one is obviously Warhammer 40,000, right? That's argue, it's arguably the best. It, it, cause, so Warhammer well, I mean, 40,000... Like, well, when I say right, more popular, I mean, is played more. I'd say they're played equally. Honestly, at the uh, Warhammer store down the, down the road from base, honestly, I see more uh, Sigmar games being played. Okay. But if we're talking like spinoffs and stuff, like Warhammer 40,000 has uh, has a game called Necromunda, which is where you build like gangs and fight each other. Um, there's Kill Team, which is instead of like a large, large board and large armies, it's individual models being moved. There's uh, Horus Heresy 2.0 that just came out in the last year, which is the prequel. Uh, it's the heresy, which I prefer that more than Warhammer 40,000, to be honest. That's what I was going to bring. I was going to bring the rule book for that. You can kill a man with that book. Okay, so I, I, I'm familiar with some of the mechanics. I know that there's a bunch of armies that you can play as, and each army has its own codex, its own rule book. Yeah, so they all have their different play styles. So for Warhammer 40,000, how many armies are you able to play? Or able to choose from? A lot. 
Really? So for the Imperium as like a faction alone, there's over like 20 individual factions that you can play from. Now, and that's just the Imperium. Is it now for... Would it... If... Could you like cheese the system a little bit? Like, yes. is there like one army that's like just automatically better they're than all just, supposed to be balanced but they're not but especially with the new edition they are not okay uh the new edition came out two or three months ago and there are already some definite bottom tier armies um the top tier at the moment is currently uh eldar armies but that's because they've always eldar armies have always been super cheap in my opinion because whereas everything else does have like downsides to it. So for example, um, like normal human armies like this, they're always gonna be super numerous, but they're always very weak. Yeah, honestly, just like put it up to the camera. They ain't, they ain't gonna see anything else. They ain't gonna see rich shit. Go ahead. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Um, yeah, we'll figure it out later. Um, but yeah, so like normal standard human armies like that are always going to be super weak. We are going to have a lot of them. Um, I've, I've ran lists of normal humans where it's been like a hundred, hundred infantrymen. And that's not even counting like the tanks and the artillery and everything that goes along with them. So does your skill in winning a game depend on you buying the figurines? Some sometimes it can, other times it, it's very much not. Will your um, opponent just like, hey, I noticed you got like there's five there's not really <laughs> well you you agree on a points limit and then you meet that points limit. So like a we're standard, not, we're not gonna talk about the game mechanics because that that would take us all day because I know because then I'll have to look well, up it, an instructions. It, so it so it is a little bit easy. Um, so like normal like normal humans, they're like six points a piece, right? Then you have like a super elite, like this, this is like a space Marine to a space Marine. Yeah. That guy alone is 62 points. He's more worth more than a squad of humans. That's okay. But you meet that points limit. Yeah. So the, the standard points limit is 2000. Okay. And then you add to your list, whatever fits you within that limit and what, according to whatever kind of you want to play. What what style you want to play? And, and just and just for the audience' sake, the, the type of game that this is it's more like a battle simulator. Is that correct? Yeah. It, it the way I always describe it, it's like if a little green army man had rules. Okay. Um, and then if you've ever seen like old war movies and stuff where they're moving pieces across the board with like a push stick, it's almost yeah, like that. Except you're much- except you're rolling dice to see the the effectiveness of your units. Yeah, that's pretty much what I thought it was going to be, too. So, okay, so another thing I have to ask. Um, if I was to play War, would I be ostracized to bring figurines that I do not paint? Not really. They they might make fun of you for it, but I definitely know people who don't paint their own miniatures. I mean, if you if you don't have the skill and you want your stuff to look good, then yeah, you you get someone else to do it. You could just like, hire a guy to figurine. Yeah. Because I mean, like, so this one in particular, this is one of the few models that I actually have that's like some of my first painting examples. Like you can see it's very basic. Like a, a basic Warhammer paint job is uh, three colors. Yeah. And then basing material. It's It's three. What? Oh, yeah, so there's see. there's the gun metal on it. There's gray, green, and then the light gray. But it's all very basic. There's not like a lot of detail to it. It's it's very blocky, for lack of a better term, I guess. Yeah. So that's one of the first ones that I had. And then you get into something like this is this guy's like more like mid tier, like getting decent at it. Even. Yes, I did. I, how could I you once even... I once painted uh, thirty of these small guys at once. Having to do sixty eyes in a row was not pleasant. I would go insane. 
But then, like, kind of better example, because like I said, he's kind of like where I was getting good at painting. Like, how much would this, like, set you, like, just to paint alone? Because this is, like, high quality. How the fuck do you even get to this? Very small brush. That is a tiny microscopic needle. I don't, I don't need, I, I also don't use a uh, magnifier. See, they, I do that with my crappy... With your, with your mole vision? <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. You have like the better steady hands than that of a surgeon. You could be a doctor. With the steady skill. I, I've had to redo eyes before. Okay, well, maybe like nurse. But, but yeah, like that's, this is, this is a, one of my better sort of. I feel like that should be a challenge for doctors whenever they're doing surgery is to just paint Warhammer figurines for 2,000 hours straight <laughs> just to get them to practice. But that's, uh, they, they, they're very beautiful and I do like those. Thank you. Yeah, they're all, uh... It's a very interesting hobby that I will not see myself doing. It's, it's not for everyone, I'll admit. Well, I mean, it's, it's a really intensive hobby too. Like, it, I feel like it's more yeah. intensive than anything I've ever dealt with my, before. I got a bunch of other hobbies. I got, I, I collect vinyls, I do pictures, I do this. But like Warhammer is just like three hobbies rolled into one. Yeah, I, I mean, kind of like they were saying earlier, like or like I was saying earlier, you can just pick like, like the lore, or the or painting, yeah. or because yeah, there, there. I mean, there are people who buy the miniatures and just paint them. How and long, that's weird to. I'll admit that's a little weird to me, but I also understand. Yeah, I was gonna say like do they even play the game because because uh, the dude who got me into warhammer that's what got him into it because he painted like model cars and stuff okay and he would paint them and then they would just sit on a shelf and it's like well that's a strange there's topic. a there's a 80 dollar piece of plastic it's just <laughs> sitting on my shelf collecting <laughs> dust and then uh he was at work one day and uh because he was he was in a support job he was building a model and like one of the other dudes from the shop came out and they saw him and they were like, oh, you you build models. He was like, yeah, I uh, build and paint model cars. And they're like, come back here and take a look at this. <laughs> and they showed him they had, a, they had a game going on. And they were like, yeah, like you, you build and paint the models here and then you, you put them on the map, you roll dice, you move them around. And he was like, that seems a lot better of a deal. I get to actually use the stuff that, that I work on. That makes sense. How long would a game usually take? Depends. Okay. So, what, if you're what is your... if you're teaching a person, it can, a game can take like eight hours. Fuck. But if you if you're going up against someone who knows what they're doing, they know their units, they know your units, they can do the math. They're like, oh, if I shoot at this unit, I only have like a chance of doing like one wound. I'm not going to do that. I've had a game go for like two hours. How did they dictate like the range of? So the uh, so that's all in the codex. Okay, you have to. It, 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 well, quick question: Is a ruler involved? Yes. Okay, I thought so. That's, or more, I would say more accurately, a tape measure. That's all I gotta know. You don't you don't have to tell me anything else. If if a tape measure is involved, then I was like, okay, this is a serious game. <laughs> it's a very serious. It, it can I, be and it can be like I, older I like that. older editions used to be a lot worse. Really. So, uh, like now, nowadays a vehicle just basically acts like a unit and you can move it up to its distance or whatever. You can make multiple turns and stuff. Back in older editions, you actually had to do like the math and find, uh, circumferences. You'd have to be like, oh yeah, it's turning 45 degrees and it's moving like six inches. Okay. It has to move like this and turn on and on like this angle. I imagine that could start a lot of arguments. Like uh, yes. It's like, no, you fucker. It's, it's, it's 46 degrees, not 45. Yeah. So they, they definitely, they made it easier with some of that stuff. But then like other times, like they used to use what were known as templates. So you'd have a clear plastic like circle. That makes sense. And it'd be like, okay, I'm aiming here. Okay. It moved over here. And like, this is an issue I had with people that I used to play with where I'd look over it and it'd be like, okay, it's hitting these 10 people. And then the motherfucker from across the table looking at an angle, he's like, nah, it's only hitting like six of them. And it's like, I'm, 
I'm looking directly over it. It's, I got the template. I'm holding the template. It's right here. It's hitting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's like, he gets like here, and it's like, no, it's 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 not hitting six. <laughs> it's hitting like eight, but it's definitely not hitting these guys. And it's like, it's like the nah uh argument. <laughs> yeah, it was awful. They got rid of templates. Thank, somewhat thankfully, because you could you could hit so many people under a template. And then they just brought it to like, oh, you get this number of shots. And it's like, makes it easier. You can't argue it. But at the same time, it's like, well. Have, have you ever gone into like a really bad argument with like another player over this? No. No, I, I realize it's just a game and it's not serious. Okay. Have, have you witnessed other arguments that got? Not that I can recall. Okay. So it's a very civil environment. It can be. I've only, but then again, I've only played amongst like my friends. All right. We uh, we once brought like a new guy into our group, and he was a pain in the ass. Really? We only we only played against him once, and then after that, it was like. But then again, we also found he was known in local circles as being a pain in the ass. Was he just like a prick, or was he just like a general jackass? <sighs> he just he just did things weird and like very much tried to win. He, he would interpret rules to benefit himself. I see. Okay, he's one of those fuckers. Gotta hate him. I mean, I think he, I think he got better in recent years, but it's still just like, I see his name pop up like, hey, anyone want to play Warhammer? And it's like, probably <laughs> nah, not against you. We're not going to do that. Well, do you have any other hobbies? Uh, covered video games, covered outdoor stuff, covered... Okay. Warhammer vaguely. Do you like any fart music? Any what? Fart music. Never, never heard of that. It just goes like my fucking jam, dude. I uh, I can't say <laughs> that. Uh, can't say that I have. You just don't even know what to think anymore, huh? You're just like big head. Trying to get the fuck out of here. Big head, no thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> oh fuck. No, I, I, I mean, I like sitting down talking. It's, uh, it's not, it's not bad, but, uh, kind of been, uh, listening to shitty 2000s rock <laughs> nowadays, uh, going back and listening to the, to, to the classics, the classics, <laughs> the, the good old, the, the butt rock. I can't go wrong with butt rock. At, you look, at least I admit that it's shitty 2000s rock. Nowadays, like nerds, like us, we're, we're more like, accepted. A lot, we're a lot more accepted. Like, like we're now part of the zeitgeist of America, but there's, but it got replaced pretty quick with like other people, school shooters. It's the best way to describe them. They're, they're, they, they were, what we'll, replaced we'll nerds, the ones you get, the ones that get picked on, and it is unfortunate because they just do a lot of mass shootings. Who, who would have guessed? Well, I mean, it's also a. It's it's the wage gap in the U.S. It's mental health problems. It's it's n limited access to mental health resources and stuff. It's it's a whole slew of problems. I I used to be even as a gun person. It is also like access to firearms. It's yeah. bad. It's poor training and poor control of them on like family members' parts and. I, I, I used to I used to hang out with this group of kids that were like on the edge. They were very edgy kids. Like they they love listening to Filthy Frank. They just talked a lot of shit. A lot of them say the N word a lot. And they, these are white kids. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I did make a documentary about them. <laughs> I got that. I got rid of that documentary pretty quick. <laughs> When, when, when 2020 came around, I was like, all right, maybe I should probably delete this video now. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, that guy got buried pretty quick. It stopped being cool. It was never cool. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's never cool. My bad, guys. Sorry. Oh, man. I, I think we've exhausted everything we talked about. Yeah, I, I really don't have... This was, a, this was a great conversation. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, didn't, I didn't think it was it's, too bad. It's great to have someone. It's great to have someone on the chair who's not a rap artist. 
have some diversity come through. I mean, I can vaguely rap if you want. I I don't want to, but Ian, I think you you saying that was the worst decision of your life. So now you have to. No, rap. I'm not gonna. No, no, I'm not. I can't. Okay, okay. I should say I can't. I can't rap my own stuff. Okay, you can rap someone else's stuff. Yes, I can rap someone else's stuff. <laughs> I know you say it's me. It's because I. Well, it's, it's like I sing with my music, right? <laughs> Do you listen to rap? Occasionally. Really. It's it's not like, like it, we're about ready to end I'm, the episode, but now we're not. We have to talk about this. <laughs> so like I, I, okay. Look, I said that I listen to rock. I don't just listen to rock. Yeah, yeah, right? of course. That'd like I, I listen to a little bit of like old older country stuff. Not too much, but like Johnny Cash, yeah, stuff like that. I listen to rap, like. Oh, Eminem, uh, Beastie <laughs> of Boys. Of course, um, it's gonna be Eminem. It, a lot of, I guess, older music is what I listen to. Old school, pop. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, a little bit of like uh, EDM. I listen to like EDM stuff as well. Okay, um, real quick, what, what what rap song do you know by heart that like you just rap to? Uh, check it out. By the Beastie Boys. Um, All right. Well, I don't know what song that is, but I'm, I'll look it up after this. Uh, I can't believe. I can totally. I can't, I have most of High Voltage down by Linkin Park. Anyway, that was Kean. He's he's my boss from work. He doesn't have any Twitter handles. He doesn't have any social media. So don't go looking <laughs> this guy up, please. Don't go dox at him. For the love of God, please don't dox him. I mean, I do have an Instagram, but it's boring. <laughs> I think it's just my name. It's, it's, it's mostly just my Warhammer miniatures. Uh, well, there it is up on the screen. It's for <laughs> we'll look it up later after this. <laughs> See how many follows you get. That'd be wild if I get any. <laughs> That'd be I mean, I can't... I I mean, I occasionally like hashtag like Warhammer or Forge World or whatever. He's just, just gonna get a bunch of comments. It's like, nerd. Yeah, you're right. I'm used to it. It's all right. They'll call you worse things. Sure. My fam. It's my fandom. <laughs> I'd appreciate you not. That's kind of mean. <laughs> anyway, that's Keenan. Thanks for coming. Yeah, no problem. That was Keenan and Young Igloo from the Sundown Podcast. I've been Big Pepper Jack, signing off. Hey, so I don't know if you know this, but you guys can get off the internet and meet up with real women, right?